Hello. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Hola. Hola. Bonjour. Ça va? <laughs> Is anybody there? Hopefully you are. Uh, so, uh, so hello. How are we all doing? So, uh, so welcome to another uh, Kate Flix live event. So, uh, it's great fun, isn't it? This is... Oh, what's that funny noise? Oh, it's just the computer. <laughs> I thought we were about to blow up there. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, um, so it's, I just came back. Oh, I can hear myself. Oh, just myself. Um, so... So it's been a busy, busy old uh, two or three weeks. Um, and the last week, as some of you will know, we've been away at a wedding in, uh, as we say, in Scotland. But I started, I made the cake in Scotland, and then we drove down to Whitley Bay, which is near Newcastle in England, uh, for uh, I, I keep saying our nieces, but it is our niece, but it's David's um, family. And it's David's niece's. Uh, it was niece's wedding. It was wedding, which was last, uh, last no Saturday just passed. Um, so yeah, so it was a really busy time. So we made this uh, big, huge five-tier wedding cake. And it was to be sharp edged, uh, just all white, uh, just a little bit of luster dust, uh, and then it was it was one and a half uh, depth, big cake, and then she wanted it covered in fresh flowers. So um, so we ordered, I think it was about 120 roses all in. So uh, a lot of roses cascaded down there. So it was 120 posy picks uh, that I had to buy, and I think that came in around about 35 pounds just for the posy picks. So uh, so it's not a not a cheap thing to do when you're doing fresh flowers. So you like how much the flowers cost. And then the, the posy picks in there, but it doesn't matter because it looks amazing. Uh, so it lo looks stunning with the big, the big sort of cascade coming down the front. Now the interesting thing was um, that it was so hot, uh, strangely enough, in the UK that um, it was a little bit of a panic, and I've never had to deal with that situ situation with fresh flowers. So what I decided to do, a little bit of pressure being the wind, uh, was to wake up in the morning, go for breakfast, come back, uh, stack the cake because uh, it was five tier, stacked it all at the in the hall. Uh, which is all lovely, uh, and then I decided just to leave it and then go away to the, the uh, to watch the ceremony, uh, and then come back like I'd loads of time, go for some lunch, have a good old chat, and then head back to the hotel. The, the, the reception didn't start till seven thirty, and uh, we're in the hotel uh, in the in the restaurant, and I get a little text from the bride's mum saying, "Where the heck are you?" Stress. <laughs> it wasn't stress; it was just a little stress face. So all of a sudden, a pole five kicked in, and I, I almost drove through the restaurant window to get David. Uh, we did a, a 360 and we flew to the, the hotel where, of course, what I didn't realise was the photographer was going to do a, a photo shoot with the cake, so that was a little bit stressful. Uh, so instead of just myself in a nice calm zone, cutting the little stems and putting them to the posy pick and then slowly just being very arty and placing it on, I had about six people helping me. Um, in the background, which was good and bad, because it was really nice, because it was all the kids, so they were cutting stems, so it was a right wee family uh, thing, and uh, and they all helped me arrange the cake. So a little bit stressful. I was in full kilt, so as you can imagine, I, I was needing to go for a shower after that, but I didn't have any time. Um, so it was a good excuse to get changed out of the kilt uh, about nine o'clock. No, it was about ten o'clock, I think. I sneaked away with a, sh a quick shower uh, and got changed into my, my civvies, so to speak. Um, but uh, yeah, a really, really good wedding, so it was good fun. So, um, so, uh, so uh, congratulations to Emma and Adam again. So it was a really nice uh, wedding. Um, so what we're doing tonight? Uh, so tonight, obviously in the wed the wedding mood, uh, I thought we could go to the dark side today. So, uh, so what I've got here is just a wee dummy. I normally try and ganache things to make it to fake it and make it look like we're using real cake, but I thought there's no point because um, it's a waste of cake and ganache. So what we've got here is two dummies. Now I've not even measured them, I just went to the cupboard, the store to see what I like size wise. And I'm assuming it's a six and a seven or a six and eight. So a six by six, and uh, what is an eight by nine? So um, so this is this would be the equivalent of three tiers. Now I want to do this one because I want to explain if it was cake, how we'd ice it. Because we're going to a different type of icing today, so how we, how we cover the cake. Um, so I'm going to do two different techniques to, to get the same finish. On that, that was the idea for today. That's, that's the big uh, idea of today. A little bit of marbling, a little bit of gold work, and then we finish off with a big funky mental flower on top. <laughs> mental is the, the term, so that's that. So now it's so hot here in Spain uh, that I've uh, I'm on my bare feet, which is really dangerous. I shouldn't be on bare feet in the kitchen, so I do apologise. So if I drop a knife and I just run off the set, it's because I just that was it. But it's so hot, I had to go for a cool shower there before we get started. So that's me giving myself an excuse if anything goes wrong tonight. We've got the AC on full blast and it still feels really hot in here, so I don't know what's going on. But I think because I've not been here for a week, that's what it probably is. And the heat's built up, 
Um, so it's just taken a while to cool down. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of people feeling the heat. So we've got Mia from Sweden on. Oh, it's a hot day as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know what's this all about? But we complain when it's cold, and then we complain when it's too hot. I think we should live roughly in the sort of spring and autumn time. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's what we're doing uh, just now. So so as uh, always, I'm going to be using my lovely Massa uh sugar paste. So I've got the Massa here. Uh, so we should open that. And the first thing we want to do for, for, for both cakes, so when you open up enough to ice the two, is we just want to ice the top of the, the cake. Now, the reason why I'm doing this design was inspiration from me back, back home. So um, I was back in Scotland and had a 5 to end cake to make. And uh, my little mum's, mum and dad's kitchen is probably about the size of this kitchen. Yep, it's probably about the size of this. Um, but of course they've got all their stuff in it. So, uh, and don't have a big breakfast bar. It was, uh, this is a sink here and a little washing machine here. So uh, there, there's, not, there's not much space, it's a wee tiny thing. So, um, so I reached out to uh, the new owners of Truly Scrumptious Designer Cakes in Lithgow. Now, some of you might know this, and some of you might know it, but uh, that was our, we were the, the founders of it, uh, so of Truly Scrumptious in Lithgow. So we, we opened it up, gosh, how long did we have about? Um, it was 2002, we first started, that so was Paul Bradford Designer Cakes, and then it became Truly Scrumptious in 2004, so September 2004. So 2002 till now is how long? Uh, 17 years. 17 years, there we go. 17 years. So 17 years um, s since we opened up and it's the new, they're the new, it's new owners. So I thought I would send a wee cheeky message because uh, I'd love to meet the new owners and see the old staff. The staff are still there. Yeah, after all that time. So, uh, so I popped in, I, I sent a little cheeky message and of course they, they, were, they were more than happy for me to, to come along and make the cake. So it was only 10 minutes from mum and dad's house, so it was perfect. Uh, Angela Henderson kindly offered me to go to her place, um, but it's just a wee bit further away, and, uh, and I was wanting to go and see the staff. So thanks, any, uh, thanks Angela, for that anyway. Um, so yes, yeah, so we got there, and of course the hotel was there, was there for two days, two and a bit of days, on and off, and I could not believe how many marbled cakes they were making. Celebration cakes, wedding cakes, with marble on it. And I thought, you know, I need to do some more marbling, marbling in my life, so because it's really good fun. So that's that's where the inspiration comes, and it was just so nice being back at Truly Scrumptious. Uh, it was uh, so Hillary's Hillary. There was Hillary, Marion, and Louise, and uh, Hillary. And Ma well, Marion was the she's the longest survivor. <laughs> so she's been there a long, long time. She went away for a while, came back, uh, and uh, so I think Marion's been there. She must be on and off, but all together, probably about what 14, 14? Yeah, yeah, fourteen years. Yeah. So um, so and then Hillary's been there for about thirteen years or something like that. So yeah, so it was really really nice. It was lovely to catch up. And as soon within, within minutes of being there, um, it was like I'd never been. It was just like good old good old days. It was so nice just catching up and the the gossip and yeah, it was really really nice. So uh, so that was that. So um, the, I think David is worried in case I came back with uh, ideas of wanting to open another wee cake shop again. <laughs> Uh, but after two days, I thought well, I remembered how, how much pressure pressure it is when you've got a, a, a shop with a lot of cakes that they've got to make. So because um, it's uh, fast, fast, fast. That's where I get the term fast, fast, fast from. <laughs> right. So I've got an eight-inch round, and uh, so I'm just going to just give it that there on there. So that's fine. So that should be enough for that one. So I just lift that up and just place that on like that. Okay. Just get your wee smoother. So of course, if this is ganached, then uh, what you'd have is your three layers. You can see there's a layer where I've stuck it on. So you've got one there, and then you've got hit there. So you'd have your, so if that's an eight inch round, you'd have a seven inch round cake card in there, and a seven inch round cake card in there, and you'd have your dowels. And the bottom here, I'd probably put an eight inch round cake drum. So it's nice and nice and thick, just so you've got something to scrape against. And then your dowels inside, so the, so the cakes don't collapse into each other, okay? And there's a, there's a tutorial on the website, and it's all about ice and tall cakes. And it shows you exactly how to do that on the, on the tutorial. And it's free. And it's free. Just, there we go. Just type in um, double barrel cake. And there. Is that what you've just been looking for? No, no. I'm, I'm looking at a question from Denise Martin. Um, so do you ever get the problem that after you lay your fondant on top of the cake that it breaks and makes a hole? Yeah, so uh, so I use the mass of the Chino, so it's, it's a, it is a very expensive one. Um, so it's really stretchy and it doesn't tend to break. So you can see here, look over the side how sharp that edge is. Even if I pull that, look, let's just do a look. 
So I'm pulling it, and look, it's not it's not cracking. Okay, so uh, so I always say, especially with cakes like this, the more expensive you can go, the better. Okay, so uh, just get a clean knife, and uh, I just want to. So if this is a ganache cake, I would be pulling this this knife around the um, it would be cutting against the ganache. Look how lovely that sharp is. Look at that. So if you look here, I'll try and do it to the camera. So you hold the sugar paste, and I'm pulling the sugar paste away from the cake as I cut. Look at that. Look how sharp that looks. That's exactly what happens. So make sure your cake's been in the fridge, your ganached cake's in the fridge, um, and then as soon as you bring it out, get the, get the icing on, and it makes it nice. If it's, if it's soft, if it's a buttercream cake, uh, it's really hard to get that sort of sharp finish. Uh, personally, I mean there is people who can do it, but I find it really hard. So I'll, always ganache for me. Okay. Any of your rough bits, I'm just taking away with the, the smoother there. Okay. And then we just want to repeat the, the same process uh, with the V1. Okay. So just pop that on there. So it's been a long time since I was at. I mean, just, I'll just talk about truly scrumptious for a wee while because it was lovely just being back. Um, and it's always funny, isn't it? Because when you sell a business, it's always hard to go back when it's new owners, etc. So this is, this is the second owners, and they just took over, I think, about a year ago. Um, that was uh, July last year. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Colleen uh, and our husband, and our family, actually. It's like any family that's helping out. Uh, and it's just it's amazing what she's done in such a small period of time. She's really sort of trying to modernise the cakes. Uh, she's uh, completely renovated the shops. The shop's in Lithgow, Scotland. So if you've not been in for a while, you should pop in, to have a wee look. Uh, they do the most amazing um, cupcakes, they do, do you know what, what are those things, like a dessert jar, so it's all the scraps from the cake and they put them in wee jars and they sell them with like fillings in them, which is really cute. So yeah, no, it was really lovely, lovely shop. Really nice. Okay, so just the same thing again, so I'm just going round. It's always harder when it's a dummy because there's no weight, weight on it. So Denise said, if you're having problems with the cracks, if you can't change your sugar paste, I was just thinking there, just add a bit of your Crisco. You've got, I'm sure you've got like a Crisco. Um, so a little bit of Crisco into the fondant, mix it up, and then that should help just to smooth it out a little bit. Not too much, or you'll make it too soft. But just enough, just to take the dryness and the crackiness away from it. All right, so there we go. So there we are. So that's the two uh, cakes iced. So what we're going to do is just pop this one back over there. Uh, and now we're going to go straight into doing the marbling, okay? So let's get the... Let's get that out of the way. So I've got the, the black here. Okay, and it's just black and white marble and we're done. Okay, so we'll do this one first. So how much have we got there? Probably, what? Yeah, about 200 grams. Excuse me, I've just taken a big swig of water. 200 grams of water. Grams of water. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, it's the heat. I, I've been feeling like sorts all day today. I think it must be the jet lag coming back from the UK as well. That three hour flight's a killer. <laughs> and I didn't, and the first thing Matthew asked, he says, well, did you have a lot to drink, eh, Uncle Paul? But I didn't, did I? I just a couple of cider. I love, I love a strawberry cider, nice and refreshing. Yep. There's only so many you can have because they're so sweet. Right, so what I want to do with this, with this one is I'm going to stretch, stretch it and uh, just place on strips. So I'm gonna do like a big one, and then a wee one, and then a wee one like that. Okay, just pat that down, turn it over, and I'm gonna do the opposite, the same, sorry, the same on the opposite side. So again, there, place that on, um, and then just put the other one on there. Now, if, I, if we're lucky, we might have enough to do the two, which I think we will, now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, so there we go. Now, if you want to just do a wee, couple of wee cheeky bits, you could do a couple of little bits like that there. It looks like a, a, a gamer for a computer game, look. Is it? No. no. <laughs> okay, so uh, press that down like that. Okay, and then all we want to do is just that we just want to sort of twist it, give it a little twist like that so we're twisting it and then fold it over and press down okay and then press down and then just mix it through and then you've got to remember to stop 
because that's the big thing, isn't it? Because we keep on going and it's gone, okay? So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to cut right through the middle. And have a look and see how we... Oh yeah, look at that. That looks lovely. Good. Right, okay. So I'm uh, just going to get my powder. Now I'm just going to roll that out. Now, interestingly, I've rolled it too much. So I'm not happy with that. So the good thing about being black is we can just mix it away. So I got a wee bit too excited. So I'm not happy with that one. So just mix that away. Now if that's whatever the strong colour is, you can just mix it away. Okay, and I'm just going to do that again. Okay, let's just stretch it out again. Now this time I'm going to put them slightly bigger because they were quite small. And I want slightly bigger pieces. There we go. Try it again. Okay. Any questions coming in, Mr. Blake? No, Blitz? no, I'm just, we've we'll, we'll managed to get it running live simultaneously on Facebook, YouTube, and on the website. Wow, high five. So, there we go. Yeah. Nice. Um, a lot, lot of people on, a lot of people on. Is there? But uh, I didn't want to interrupt you because you were in the middle of doing such a delicate task. Oh, right, you okay. Yeah. To fuck up. <laughs> no. Okay, so I'm not going to, what I'm doing is I'm rolling it over this time like rock, okay? And I'm just going to give it a little twist like that. Nothing too much, okay? And then I'm going to press down, I'm going to fold it over again like so. Okay, and then I'm just going to just, now I don't want to, I really don't want to mix it too much. So I'm just going to. Just fold it. I'm not going to, I don't really don't want to lose that. Can you give it, right, let's just do one more little dust. Right, okay. Right, you can cut that. I think I got too excited with the old chaffing up. Yeah, that looks better. Yep. Good. Yep. Yeah, there's bigger bits in there. I just didn't want it to be too small. I even still got a wee bit excited there as well. But it will do. The time I roll it out, it'll widen up a little bit. Okay, so just knit that together. Oh, looks a bit spooky. What's again? Hi, can you see it from down there? I'm still not happy with that. <laughs> Oh, I'm having a bad a bad one tonight. What is going on? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Matthew, do you want to take over for me tonight? <laughs> Dave, Dave, is going to, Dave is going to kick in. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm going to completely go against what I've just said there. I'm not going to do a sausage anymore. Okay. I'm just going to do a couple of big lumps. So while you're placing your big lumps, uh, Joe's yeah. asked the stack dragon course that you're running. Yes. Are you going to release that for tutorial? Yes. Are you? Okay. Yeah. But not, not yet, <laughs> but yeah. I'm actually thinking of doing one similar um, to that one. Is it Joe? Joe? Yeah. yeah. Um, but for Christmas. So a Christmas, a Christmas style one, it was, it was a similar, similar idea, um, but done a little bit differently. But the same techniques, just not the dragons. Right, I'm happy with this. Yeah. So, Len, Len Davison saying you're making all your little mistakes after you're high living at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah. yeah. David just ch he's chucked me at the deep end. Yeah. Man from cider. That's me from my strawberry cider. That feels better. It was just way too busy for my liking. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I was, I was, I thought, right, I said, I'm just going to bed. So, because it's so warm here, there's a so third row problems came back in my swim pool was almost a, a green soup. So I've been trying to work out my mathematical um, chem chemistry to, to work out how much chemicals to chuck in to, to give it a wee, a wee shock, as they say. So hopefully tomorrow it'll be crystal clear. If not, we'll need to phone in the, the specialist. Okay, that's much better. So what we're just looking for is a kind of nice, soft, stony marble effect and before it was it was just too busy uh, for my liking that much looks much better and we've got plenty for the the two of them as well 
So what we need to do is we need to just get a little bit of the, the tricks because we're not we're not putting that much on, but it was just I just wanted to get it the right way, and that's the thing with marbling is you've just got to you can waste a lot of sugar paste getting what you're looking for, so you've got to think of that when you're timing yourself for your cakes. Okay, right, okay. Take off the excess. So if that was a, a ganache cake, then I'll just give it a little squish with some alcohol uh, or just a little bit of sugar glue on there. Right, so if we look at the, the cake, so we know it's going to be nine and we want to come up to the nine. So I'm going to, I like this bit here. So if we just cut there and then we come up nine, so there's the nine point there, that's fine. And uh, I'm just going to cut down like that, okay? That's good. Okay, and I'm just going to roll it thinner at the sides. And the idea of rolling it at the sides is when we come to cover the rest of the cake, we can, you don't see the big bump. We're going to cut some of it away once it's on as well. Okay, so you can see it's really thin on the edges. I can maybe just roll it a little bit more. Oh, Mum's on. Oh, hello, Mum. She'll be fed up seeing me. I was staying with Mum before and after and during. <laughs> well, not during. Right, uh, lift this over. And we just want to place that on. Now, you can see it's just draped over the top with it stretching. And that just gives us time to work on it. Okay, there we are. Beautiful. That's very good. So just get your smoother and then just back and forward it and really make sure you've got that on there nice. Like so. Great. Right, so now we want to look at our shape. So what shape are we doing? So from, from the bottom area, I kind of want to kind of go up. Now you, you can use the back of your knife or even a, a, a dresden tool, but see how we've got that, that shape going there. I like that shape. So I'm thinking what we'll do is Oh, we'll kind of, no, I think we'll go, I was going to go the same with that, but actually if the collar's kind of go around there, so I think what we'll do is we'll kind of go something like that, and we'll just go right into that, and then the same, I like that bit there, so I'm thinking I'm going to go around, around there, around, and then just follow that line up, something like that, yep, that looks good, okay, so that's good, so I'm just going to just take that away, Oh, very but misjoined, misjudged that one. Okay, like that, good. Right, so once we've got that off there like that, just very carefully, watch not damage the surface. There we go, and remove the excess. Now this top piece, just be careful, we're going to be painting it, but we still want it to look good. Now you can see the, the line there, well, that doesn't mark, so we're going to blend that away. So this little bit here, again, clean knife, and then just lift that up, and we want to just cut, that's not clean, the knife, and just carefully just cut that away, and bring the edge over, so we've got a nice clean finish, like that. Now, what I want to do now is just go round, and we just want to very carefully just try and blend that down so it's not a, like a big edge. Now don't worry because the sugar, when we come to ice it, that'll be hidden with the other sugar paste. Okay. Okay, so all the way around like that. Good, there we are, so that's that one there. So if I just pop him out of the way, and then bring over this one, and uh, we just want to find, now I quite like this wee bit here. I think that's all we need. Now what I'm thinking is, uh, I'm gonna cut, first of all make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna cut along there. I like that and I also like that bit, so I'm going to just, let's just see. Oh, I like that. Maybe that's nicer than that. Let's just see. 
Ace having choices. Such a show this down. See what it's like. This looks a little bit thinner. Ooh, yeah, I quite like that. I think that's maybe nicer. Yeah. Okay. Let's just have a wee trial. Mm -hmm. Maybe go on sideways like that. Let's just see. Or do we like that one? No, I like that one. That's good. Right, so a little bit of treks on again. Let's go. There we go. It's Australia waking up. We've got a few on from Australia. Is that them getting up? And uh, there's a few saying that it looks like a good Halloween cake. Oh yeah, the black and the, because yeah. of the, the, the sort of, yeah, the shapes. Yeah. It's funny because I was looking at Halloween cakes today, um, so, because Dave was going to, like, you're, you're all going to go, what? But I was thinking it was a Christmas demonstration tonight, and I thought, oh, I can't really do Christmas until I've done some Halloween stuff. But you've got to start getting organised if you've got a cake business, especially if you're going to be teaching. Um, so I have saw, I have saw someone advertise a, a cake decorating a Christmas class already. I can't remember who it was, um, so that's... They, they have started already, um, but I thought maybe that was a little bit too early when it's the middle of uh, the middle of summer. Well, summer for some. Right, so that looks good. So all I want to do with this one uh, is that the idea is I want to be wider, and it's, I want it to kind of come down. So I'm just going to just meander, and then maybe just bring that up. So it's so it's going from point to point. If that makes sense. There we go. So Dan's asked down um, here. When you're talking about stacking tiers, yeah. do you do each two or three inch cake separately? Se separately. So it's like a little table. It's like a little little dip, three inch dials on the three inch cake yeah. with a plate, yeah. and then you put the next cake on the three inch dials and another plate. So it's like almost if you imagine like a, a skyscraper, and all the all the, the levels have all got the pillars creeping up, the exact same with inside of a cake. Yeah. Okay, so that looks good. So happy with that. So just give that a wee brush. And then the same thing, make sure you've got a clean knife. And we just want to take away that, that top piece there. So again, just there and just try and just cut. Oops, that wasn't a good cut. All the way around. There we go. So just round it. If you've got your acetate smoothers, I've got them there, but I don't need them. And you just want to really just blend it in. There's a wee mark there. So you've got a really nice seam. And then the same thing again. Okay, so just smooth that down like that. All right, so that's jolly good. Nice, so just soft, and it has got, actually has got a really, it's got a smoky Halloween -y. You could do a wee, a wee monster kind of coming out from behind the, behind it. So, um, so if I bring the scraps over, and of course we can use these, because the, the white will just disappear in. And now comes the more difficult part. And that's ice in the cakes. Now the really big one is the harder one to do. So we'll we'll do that one last. We'll ice the B one first. Now if you're really brave you can do the, the way I'm going to show you the B one for the big one. But I thought I would just show you the two different ways. Now is that a true black? It's fine. It's fine. It's maybe a little bit lighter, but it'll be fine. Okay, so roll out your paste to ice the cake. It's easy as that. So, so um, that power is going to be making a five tier cake. Yes. So should we make she make sure that all the dills are in line down the cake, or is it better to offset them? Um, I can offset them. Yeah. So um, so if I got the cake there, I usually go twelve o'clock, six, three, nine, and I do one in between. So it's like eight dills, and I put one in the middle, and then the next time I do it, I just turn the cake around a little bit and just do twelve and turn it. So you've always got them slightly. Um, not exactly on top of each other, but the other thing is uh, the, 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 the bubble tea straw, the little straws are just so much faster than doing the, the old fashioned wind dills or the plastic dills. So the straws, you can get them on Amazon, you get Wilton ones, you get all different ones, the cake decorating company, cake stuff, they, they all sell them. Cakeflix members get 10% off at the Cake Decorating Company. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's the Cake Decorating Company you want to get it from. <laughs> nice little plug, Mr. Bryce. Right, okay, now I've got some ribbon in there, there it's there, some black. So all I want to do is get the black ribbon. And what you think is enough is probably nowhere near enough, but we'll, we'll soon find out. 
apart from tonight where I've got it almost bang on. Well, I have got it bang on. So there we go. So that's enough. <laughs> so that was a bit of luck. All right. So what we want to do now is cut the bottom. I've not measured it, so I just measure the depth first. Of all. So it should be six inches. Oh, we've got loads. There we go. There we go, right across there. Right, and then all we want to do is we want to turn the cake around the other way and just dust off the excess corn flour and just try and keep that straight as possible. And we're just going to roll it right across the top of the surface. Now, I would only recommend doing this with ganache cakes. I wouldn't do it with buttercream cakes unless it's been frozen. If you freeze your buttercream first, uh, then, then you'll be fine. Now, you could either do the tricks on there or just do the same thing again and just apply the tricks to the, the cake. So we're just going to go round and apply the tricks. I say tricks, but you know, vegetable fat. Make sure it's definitely vegetable fat. I've told you that story before a hundred times about the... The, the, the lady who came to film a tutorial with us and she thought she was doing a, a good thing getting cheap the cheap white fat from the supermarket and she'd been using it for a long time and then she realised when I, when I saw her she, uh, I told her she realised it was actually lard <laughs> not vegetable fat oh dear imagine the customers when they found that out pig fat on the cake mmm <laughs> nice so I'm just going to scrape away that excess uh, fat, vegetable fat. Okay, nice. There we go. And then, before you do it this time, get your glue because we want to make sure you get the top edge wet as well. Okay, so a little bit of glue around the edge, and that means when we come to cut, uh, it doesn't fall away and it gives you a really nice sharp edge. So, this is like what I call a collar. We're putting the black collar wrapped over the top of the marble so it's a seamless so it looks seamless at the back you could do it in two parts but i think it's nicer to do it that way now what we also want to do is there's already some tricks put on there is we want to just put a little bit of the, the glue on that edge so we're going to cut away the excess from there there we go right time to release the cake so now if you've got a cake drum underneath there, you'll have your cake drum underneath there. Now, so that you don't get all dirty, if you get a cake card so you don't get fingerprints on the top of your cake, do it that way around. There we go, okay, like that. And then just pop the cake up, oops. Like so, now I've got ganache underneath here which you'll have the same, so don't worry about it. Okay, so we want to place the cake on here like so okay and then once that's on just lift this piece up and then just roll the cake across there we go okay. so if it, remember if it's a ganache cake it'll be fine all the way across and down like that now once it's there i'm just going to give this a wee quick clean And then just a case of just very carefully lifting the cake back up okay so just give it a wee, a wee smooth okay and then you just want to lift the whole thing up and place it on the board now what happens is it starts to fall over so just keep it up there and then before you do anything you need to get your smoothers and you need to go around and make sure it's attached to your sugar your for your ganache okay there Easy peasy, look at that. So, it's, so you see when the collar, it kind of comes round and it's opening up onto the nice marble at the front, like that. Okay, now what you want to do is just make, hold the top and make sure you're really pressing it against the top bit so it's sticking against that glued edge that we've put across there, okay? Are you listening? I think some of them have fallen asleep in the background there. Right, okay. Right, so once that's done there, now we need to try and see what we've got underneath. So what we can do is if you get your knife, open up and you'll be able to see the... Oh, where's it gone? <laughs> there it's there. Oh my goodness, I'm short. How on earth did that happen? Right, just stretch that across a bit. Oh my goodness. 
I was like, where's it gone? I thought it had fallen off. My goodness, I'm definitely dopey tonight, am I? Right, stretch it a bit more. The other good thing about using Mastachino is <laughs> so you can stretch it. There we go. Is it, my goodness, that was very short. There we go. Right, that's better. Right, so all I want to do is just, with the top of the, the cake, just go around and just trim off that excess so we can get in. Okay. Good. Right, and then if we just lift the card back, there we go. That's what I wanted to get. Right, so again, I'm just going round, making sure it's definitely stuck down. So this bit here is just a little bit flappy. So I'm going to just cut some of that away. Make sure you've got about an inch overlap. So you can see there, that preferably you want that inch coming over. Okay? Not as, that was a bit tight, but luckily I, was, I got away with it. Sorry, David, were you going to ask a question? Uh, yeah, presumably you can't do that with a buttercream cake, but you can do it with a ganache cake. Although you're doing it with a dummy, you can do it with a cake. Yeah, so that's what I was explaining at the start. So ganache, fine. If you do it with buttercream, chuck it in the freezer so it goes rock solid. And then you have to bring it straight to the freezer and do it. The big problem is it's been in the freezer, it's the, the sugar base, if it's warm, it's going to start sweating. So it is probably a bit better with a ganache cake to do, to, to do the roly technique. But, but there are a couple of people saying that they don't think that you could do it with a ganache cake, but if you, if you dark chocolate it. Oh, yeah. Well, I've done it with, I've done it with, I've done it with cakes before. Okay. So we, we used to do fairy tale castles all the time oh, yeah. um, at yeah. Trolls Scrumptious, and um, we used to wrap them. So, um, so it does work. Just pop it in the fridge for five minutes, bring it out. And then off you go. That's why I was saying to use the card. Obviously, I don't have to use a card for a, a, a dummy cake, but just so you're not putting the heat into the ganache. Okay. Yeah, I've lost somebody had asked a question about uh, covering stacked cake, so I've just posted the link in there. All right. Okay. So that's a free tutorial. So uh, perfect. Yeah, that, that should help with stacking down ganache cakes. Great. Okay, so we just want to go round, and we want to take away the excess sugar paste. So just try and pull as much as possible around. No, try not to cut. You want to pull so you get a nice edge, okay? So you're just pulling it through like butter. Like that, okay. Yeah, you've got to just going back to the the, the rolling technique there. You've got to you've got to refrigerate it first. Uh, the ganache cake. Um, now, if you're doing a white chocolate ganache, just like everyone's been doing because it's been so hot, just up your chocolate content. So rather than do a two to one, you can do a four to one with the white chocolate. So that's four chocolate to one cream. Melt your chocolate in the microwave to make it soft, boil your cream or just bring it to the boil. Mix it together so it's, it, it does actually uh, mix together. Because if you don't melt your chocolate as a four to one, what ha happens is you put your cream in, mix it into the chocolate, and it cools down too quickly and it with a really lumpy ganache. So okay. for, for anybody who's not familiar with ganache, what's it? Four of pounds. Uh, so I, I, my, my, the, way, the measures that I use is, is the old school. Um, so it's um, one pint of cream to, to, uh, to four pounds when I was talking about that. So four pounds of chocolate. And you can just use your, you can just convert that on Google. So easy enough to do. I just still stick to the old, the old ways. And it works every time. Okay, so once we've got that top bit on there, we now want to go round and just smooth that off now I've got a really bad bit here, don't know if the top camera is going to catch it or not, but I've got a little bit there and we just want to really warm that up. Get that seam away. Okay, and just keep working that as much as possible. Okay, if it's fallen down just lift it back up again. Right, so there we go. So we can look there from the front. We can see there we've got the, the, the opening for the, the little bit of marble and it's going down there. Okay, so all we need to do with that now is uh, just get our knife and we need to just cut that little line. So I can see the line. We just press. You can see the line there. And we just want to cut in the inside of it so we're in the anyway, so we're not coming through to the cake. Okay. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. And then the same this side here. Okay, and around there. Okay, so I can see that one there. I can again see that you can feel the line going up. 
So I'm going to cut on the inside. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and I just soften that down. We're going to hide that join. You're not going to see that join as much the time we're finished. Your eyes will be drawn away from that. Now I'm going to go around with my smoother and just smooth the sides. And then we just want to lift that up. There we go. Good. Like that. All right. So okay, so there we are. Barbara's daughter, um, she doesn't like the taste of ganache, but Valerie likes working with ganache. So, have you oh. any suggestions for making making it a little bit more appealing to taste? So, what ganache? Yes. Oh, well, you uh, less creamy. Oh, less. Cre she doesn't like the cream, the yeah. creaminess of it. Yeah. Ooh. Right, so uh, you can flavour ganache, so... Um, yeah, she, she's tried that. She, she still doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. And is this white dark and milk chocolate? She doesn't like uh, any of them. I don't know. Because I made a Terry's chocolate orange ganache oh, yeah, at the weekend, awesome. and um, uh, I think all the guests, um, it was a bit, it was a, it was a, it was a favourite. So what we did was, uh, I did a four to one, but I could have done a five to one with that, so it's quite, it's not really real chocolate, is it? It's cheap, it was kind of cheap, cheap chocolate. But if you don't know what Terry's chocolate orange is, it's a, it's a little ball with segments. You buy them for Father's Day normally Christmas time, <laughs> or I do anyway. And um, it's a, uh, yeah, and it, it's just, it's, it's just like a chocolate orange, Terry's chocolate orange. It's milk chocolate. You do get, you do get white ones and dark ones at certain times a year. Um, but if you just break the segments in half, chuck them in a bowl, soften them up in the microwave, chuck them in. Uh, four, I would do a five to one, so melt the chocolate, melt the cream, mix it together, uh, and it makes the most amazing ganache. Yeah. So I don't know if, that'll, if that's a, a good thing or a bad thing, but you can put essential oils, not essential oils, <laughs> essential, um, uh, like the oil flavourings, I can't remember the name of the company, they're re really condensed flavourings, and you can put a few splashes of them into the chocolate uh, as you're mixing it in uh, at, the, at, the, at the cream and chocolate point. So you just put your wee spots in. Oh, what, they're, they're at Cake International every year. Oh, I've forgotten the name of them. Anyway, so it's, it's like natural flavourings. They are like essential oils, that's why, because they come in similar little bottles. Right, okay, so I'm... Uh, is it Moran oils? Was it? Moran. Is that it? Are they at Cake International? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, Leanne's suggestion. All right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately, the only other way that you can, if you don't like you, if you don't, don't like the taste of ganache, uh, really is, is buttercream and just trying your different the Swiss and the, the French style uh, buttercream Italian sorry buttercream. Right. Okay. So now on to the, the big the big boy. Okay. So I've softened up the sugar paste, give myself a bit more space because it's a bigger cake, and I'm going to really dust the table. Foodie flavours is coming through now. That's the one. Flavors, that, that's, yeah. it. that's it. The other one didn't sound familiar, but that definitely sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they do an. I remember they do an orange one because I had a student came in a course, and it was at Christmas time, and she did. They were making it as a three D Santa. Because I remember every time I walked by her table, I wanted to slice a bit off her cake, and she used those oils or those flavourings in the cake and in the ganache. And when you walked by her table, it was just like heaven. If you liked Irish chocolate orange, you would have been. Struggling not to pinch the chocolate from her. So Mia's asking, does the black massa taste the same as the white? Because sometimes black fondant sugar paste can taste different because of the colouring. Yeah. So normally I would taste it, but as I'm on day nine of, uh, I'm on, I'm, I've, I've came off sugar for the last nine days. Maybe another reason why I'm not feeling 100 percent tonight as well. Um, so I think I hit the wall this afternoon quietly without telling anyone. But I think that's probably what my problem was today. Been a little bit. Just not quite the full shilling as we see. Um, so I so I can't taste it, but Dave's gonna taste it. There we go. Matthew's gonna taste it. There you go. Does that does that taste good, bad, ugly? I've never tasted the black fondant before. I like the white one. The white one tastes nice. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Matthew likes it. Dave likes Ma it. Ma Matthew's not been fed to me. Matthew just hit the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't eat much sugar at all, do you? <laughs> Don't know. We're obviously. Yeah, it's fine. It's, yeah. It's not a strong taste. No, is, is it? Can you still taste like a slight marshmallowy? Yeah. Taste yeah. to it. You can. Yeah. Right. So that's good. So that's. If you can taste a slight marshmallow, I'd say it's very similar to the white one. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you can see here. 
And you can see I've not really had to powder the table much and look hardly any marks on the surface as well. So it's a great sugar paste. Right, let's get the thing in the jiggy. The ribbon, pop it round. That's fine, let's see if I've got enough. Oh, what's going on tonight? Look at that, I've got two inches extra. I said that with the last one didn't work, but hopefully it'll be fine. And then the height, nine, yep. So uh, it's the same thing, that looks flat to that side. So what I'm gonna do is just tweak that around. There we go. That's fine, good. Just get my knife. And we just want to cut. Now that's about four and a half. Yeah, no, it's four, four millimeters in thickness, okay? Uh, and then the same thing again, but to lift it up. Now the good thing about the mass as well, and I'm not a, a rep for, for Massa, they do give me freebies, um, but I'm not, a, I'm not a paid rep, but I just love, I love using it, uh, is you can, it's rolled out, and now you can see I'm doing this bit. Now if this was any other sugar paste, I would have put the tricks, the Crisco on first, because I'd be scared in case the sugar paste was going to dry out. Now, there was a, a brand that they were using at Truly Scrumptious when I was there last week and it was the Couture Sugar Paste. They just got a big huge shipment of it and, and they, they love using the Couture Sugar Paste. So they've just changed over to the Couture. I think they were using, or I think they still use primarily Renshaw's. Um, but they started using the Couture just because it helps with sharper edges, doesn't it? All right, so there we go. So that's grand. Now you can see I've not quite got around there, but I've got so much on this. I'm just going around taking off the excess first. Now you can use this to stick your cake down as well, um, but I'm not sure if I like the taste of it, so I generally try and just use just a glue or a vodka or alcohol type thing to stick it down. There. Grand. Interestingly, when I was at the the shop last week, we were saying that people still phone up, uh, thinking that we're still in the. We used to have a cupcake cafe bar as well, and people were still phone up asking what the, what the opening times are. I think we I think we sold that about how long? <laughs> it's about what six years ago or something like that. Longer. Nine years. Nine years. My goodness. Right. Okay. So what we want to do for this one, a little bit different, uh, is just cut. A little bit down there like that okay and then this is a wee bit trickier this one okay so what we're going to do is we're going to fold oh actually that's right what am i doing no so we're not rolling it so i forgot that so we actually want to do it this way yeah there we go now again look how it's still very very um easy to use now that bit there is very very curved uh so what i'm going to do is just bring that down a little bit i've now got a little bit worried that i've not got enough so i'm now going to just give it a little bit more extra stretch and then what we want to do, this is a little bit difficult because it's, a, it's a, a cake that's not heavy. So when I do this, I'll just put a glue at the top, uh, the cake might move. So I might have to get David to hold the cake for me. But we'll see, I might be able to do it more. But just to get yourself prepared, David. Get the makeup on. Already. Yeah, you, you got your hair done? Yeah. He just get his hair done. We've just got the stylist in the background, just get them ready. So if you just bear with us a wee second. <laughs> Right, okay, let's get this on here, so, okay, so just bring, make sure you're rolling pins at the bottom of the, 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 the line, and we just want to very carefully, now sometimes you've got to put a little bit of uh, dust on there, but I'm going to be very confident and not put any dust on, because it's massive, and it's just going to be, a, it's going to be very, very good, okay, so, uh, let's just see. So we just want to place that on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, please. Oh, I saw me and it was sort of ah, right. Sorry. If you can spin the cake around. Clockwise? Okay. Yeah, towards. Like yeah. Anticlockwise. Yeah, anticlockwise, yeah. yeah. Slow, no, slowly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's fine, okay. That's fine. And just spinning it around. Okay, and then around. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Fast. Lovely, thank you. There, 
So you can see that it's stretched hugely at the end there, okay? So, uh, but that's fine. Cut off the excess. So there we go. So you can see there are two different ways to do it. The second one's probably you are needing a, a, a pair of hands to give you a wee hand if it's a big cake like this one. What but, sounds romping? Um, so before I finish, um, just uh, if it's a real cake, it's easier. It's just because that one was obviously uh, light. Uh, I think it's 20 inches. And from? Uh, cool pit. Yeah, it's a cool pit one. However, we have little shops in town and they are called the China Shops because most stuff comes from China. And they have got them in town for five pounds. Five pounds, same, the same thing. Well, they're actually a lot lighter. Um, but they have them in the cook shops, little china shops, and they're, they're called china shops in, a, in their cook department. I don't know how they can do them that cheap, but there we go. They're not quite as heavy though, so there is a drawback. Okay, same thing again. So you can see there the two different ways to do it. We're still getting that nice iced uh, side around there. The second one, probably a little bit more of a, a two-man assistance, but there we go. So that's them iced. So I just want to show that the first one is a little bit uh, isn't good for the faint-hearted, um, but it does it does give a quick way to do it. And we and we, we did do it. I'm not just saying that just because it's the, somebody somebody mentioned that uh, when we had truly scrumptious all our fat, ca fatal castles all get cut that way. Uh, sorry, I used that way. Okay, you can see I just went down there, so I'm just coming bringing that up. A little nip and then the same thing again whoops uh, oh, let's get on. I'm gonna leave that we bit and go back to it so the same same thing just lifting it up and just try and pull oh my goodness I need to go my tiptoes for this there we go. you see I've got a few bad bits there now I'm not the best at doing this as you can see but we have a great tutorial on the website by Anna Maria um, is it Rosh? Rosh? Rosh. How to do, how to cover cakes like this and have no join, no seam on them. Oh, what's the name of the tutorial? It's the yellow, is it the yellow magnolia? It's the mag, mag, or magnolia square, floating magnolia maybe? Oh, magnolia cube. Cube. I'll just get the link. That's it, yeah. And, uh, and it, it looks, she does it, makes it so easily. So Anna used to work um, many moons ago for Planet Cake. In, uh, in Sydney, Australia, and they were the, they're they're the famous. They're the ones who started the whole craze uh, for sharp edge cakes. So you can thank her, or you can uh, <laughs> give her a row for starting such a difficult craze. But it does look nice. Okay, so there we go. So again, you hold it up, you can see that it looks lovely. Okay, look how sharp that looks. Okay. Okay, now you can see the bottom, because it, it fell down the rolling pin, so it didn't stick to the rolling pin, so another benefit of the matter, um, is we just go round and we just trim off that excess. Now I've already pre-iced the cake board, just in white. Oh, so, just bring it all together. And then we just want to repeat the same process. So just giving it a good old polish. There we go. Now I had a big clean out before I went to, back to the wedding and I was throwing out all the, the old dummies. And uh, Natalie, if you're watching, I just couldn't, I couldn't throw yours out. So they're still there. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so they're just so nice and so clean. And, well, they're not clean. <laughs> that was why I was going to throw them out. They're absolutely covered in dust now. Um, but from a distance they look fine. So, um, but you may have noticed I've got a couple of new things in the background. I've got a book from Valentina. Valentina's Sugarland. Did anyone, did anyone bought it? Valentina gave me that last year. And it's, the book is so big that um, I, I was too heavy for me to take back in my suitcase when I had to bring Sugarcraft tools over with me. So I finally had space this time to bring it over with. So, so uh, hopefully if Valentina's watching, we'd love for you to do a little book review. A little Facebook live on here. What do you guys think? Because our stuff is amazing. Look, look at that. It just it looks amazing. So, so Valentina, if you're watching, or if someone can tag her, we'd love for you to come and do a little book review on your fabulous book because it's amazing. Look how thick it is. That's definitely one for the, the cake shelf. It's just a nice picture, anyway, isn't it? So, there we go. Right. Um, okay. So background. 
So the same, same process again. I'm going to have to sit down for this one because my back's getting a wee bit sore. Right, okay, so uh, the same thing again. So you want to feel... Now I didn't put glue on the edge. So why is that not feeling like it's sticking down? So I'll need to just hopefully get away with this. Okay, so let's just see. Oh, it's going to fall apart, but we'll stick it on, don't worry. Are you available for questions? Yeah, this is a good time for asking questions. Okay. So nope, you're too late. Right, so... <laughs> so I'd like to ask, you leave the top edges um, as... It, oh, sorry, I'm not reading this properly. Do you leave the top edges as is, or can you blend? You what, what you're trying to do, and if you watch um, Ma, Ma, um, um, Anne Marie's tutorial, yeah, I'll if, just you, share the yeah, link if you cut it really, really with the blade, she, I think she's like a, a, a razor blade. Um, if you cut it sharp enough, it blends in as it cuts. I've not done a very good job tonight, um, but um, no, the idea is you just leave as is. Yeah, as long as you can get it nice and neat all the way around. When, when most people look at a cake, they're looking at a cake from that angle. They're not looking at it from above. Okay, so. Yeah. So one more question for now. Uh, Sally's asked, do you use the treks on the ganache cakes to stick down the fondant or just in dummies? Yeah, so that, uh, I've, um, some people aren't listening tonight, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, it must be me as well. It must be you as well. So um, yeah, so I was just saying that some people don't like the taste of treks. And um, so, so it's some, but some people, some people like it. They don't mind it. So you can use Trex. I don't on real cakes. I don't use Trex or Crisco. Uh, I use um, alcohol or a sugar syrupy glue to stick the, the sugar paste down. Yeah. I keep forgetting that people wouldn't rush into the toilet. They wouldn't people making a wee cup of tea. Right. Uh, so same thing again. So I just want to go round and just smooth, smooth this down onto there. Good. Okay, just smoothing that down like so. There we are. Good. So there we are. So that's us got our two cakes iced. Lovely. Uh, so what I want to do is now get a little tidy up. So this is probably a good time for us to go to commercial advert. Um, well, so if that's all right. Well, to talk a little bit, I've been getting some questions about the Cake Masters Awards. Oh, okay. So, so do you want to do that, Mr. Bryce? I'll do that. Oh, okay. You'll need to do it from the side if that's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See if it's not that, that camera. So, excuse me, folks, but um, yeah, Cake Masters Awards, so the tickets are now uh, all available. So, Cake Flicks asked for, uh, for 50. I have managed to get all 50. So, they should, so everybody who had asked for one should, uh, should have had an email today just with the, the link, um, unfortunately, they need paid for. And because Cake Masters, um, you know, things are moving quite fast now, the nominations are coming along. Um, I think the, the nominations are only open for the next couple of weeks, so um, there's not a lot of time. And then, oh, seriously? Yeah, and then once the nominations close, then there's a big rush for, for tickets again. So. Um, Cake Masters have given us until the um, s 2nd or 3rd of August, so it's not a lot of time, so if you have received an email, please get back to us as soon as possible. If you can't make it, please do let us know, because there are um, you know, other people waiting for the tickets. We've got, we have got a waiting list, haven't we? Uh, no, there was uh, a few cancellations over the weekend, so... Oh, so they've we, been filled. All right. We, we, have, we, we are kind of bobbling about, but I know when it comes to... Uh, the payment time uh, that that's that's really the, the crucial point so everybody who's registered in interest has got that availability so uh, yeah if you're going to the awards great and nominations open now just just something that's slightly different for us this year we won't be going to cake international but we will certainly be at the awards so looking forward to seeing everybody there so um for everybody who's been involved in the Pudsey display collaboration. Unfortunately, that's not going to be a feature at Cake International this year. But we, the good news is we are moving the collaboration online. So what that does do, it opens it up to a lot more people. And um, we're going to be shooting some videos next week of what's going to be involved. But essentially, it's going to be an online collaboration. We're very hopeful that we'll get the attention of the BBC. And there's a whole load of Pudsey bears going to get made, and it's just going to be some good fun um, and the competition that we're tagging on to that is anybody can join the, the, the Pudsey collaboration 
but for Cateflix members, um, they'll be entered into a competition. Part of that competition will be uh, assessed on how long you've been decorating, a bit of a backstory to the cake, and of course images and a little video hopefully of the, the cake, a video just you talking to your camera with the cake or you talking to your phone. Um, and the winner is going to come out to this very sh same studio and have a bit of fun with uh, Paul, a one-to-one -one class with Paul, and then we're going to be um, going to do a, a little Facebook Live, we'll, we'll do something here. So it's going to be a prize, come out to Spain, one-to-one -one with Paul, sometime with us, and um, we'll always make sure you have a good time. And that's for Cake Flicks members, premium and pro members. And then next year, um, we may well stick to the online collaborations, we don't know, but um, that's what's going to happen. Now, if you if you still need a minute, a good time yep. to show Ben. Uh, ben Cullen has been a superstar this week. He's made a, a video which he's going to be sharing on Cake Flicks, um, and it's him making um, a very Ben Cullen style Pudsy Bear. So I'll be quiet for a minute and let you watch that trailer, and by the time I'm finished, Paul will be back. So. Hope that's helped for anybody with any questions. Um, if you have any questions, maybe rather than um, kind of clogging up the feed tonight with them, uh, email me if there's anything specific that you want to know. And I'll disappear. What's your email? It's david at kateflix.com. <laughs> You're doing my job now. Um, so Matthew's just going to switch over and put Pudsy Bear on. Hi guys, I'm Ben Cullen, the Bake King. And as you all know, we've got this really exciting Pudsy Bear online collaboration coming up with Kateflix. So in this tutorial, I thought I'd show you how to make this guy, this Pudsy Bear Gravity Defiant Cake Fletcher. So as you can see, there's loads of cool techniques with this cake build. You're going to learn about structure, stacking cake, carving cake. Um, applying sugar paste, texturing the sugar paste, hand painting, airbrushing. There's loads of techniques in this tutorial, guys. And at the end of it, you've got this really cool cake. So come on over and join me and let's make this Pudsy Bear cake sculpture. Hello and welcome back. It's lovely to see you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so that was a mad, mad rush. Look at that. Look at that. Fast, fast, fast. So, uh, so I've just quickly uh, popped it on a ten-inch round cake drum, which I've iced, put the ribbon on, stacked it on. Again, if it was a real cake, uh, then make sure you've got your uh, ad set nose, put nine dowels underneath there before you pop it on. A little bit. I usually use. I've still got it here because that's what I used earlier on. So a little bit of melted chocolate to stick it on, okay? Ganache or fresh chocolate would be fine, okay? Um, don't do that, some royal lights in, but I may make it black royal lights in so it blends in. All right, so you can see here, it's really nice the way we've got the, the marble looking the crop goes up, and then of course then it goes up there. Now, I rolled that one piece out, and if it was a bit better, it'd be better if you could actually get it to match up. So if it was more lines, and I'd worked it a bit more, I had a bit of a bad night with the marble, and then what my idea was, it was, it was the same piece of marble and going through this, the, the, the two layers. But it didn't, it didn't work tonight. But it still looks, it still looks all right, as we say. So what we're going to do now is um, earlier on today, uh, when I was um, preparing, uh, so I just got a little bit of the black sugar paste and I just ripped it up into small pieces, and I lay on a sponge on so it's drying all the way around. Now it's been hot in here today, so it's been like a wee oven. So of course it's dried uh, pretty nicely. So what I've got here is I've got my food bag. So if you take two two food bags. And uh, we're going to just we're going to make little gold nuggets um, with the with the, uh, with the the black. So what do you think of uh, Ben's uh, little uh, pudsy? It's going yeah. to be a good one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So thanks, Ben. So really excited about doing the the, the online collab. Uh, so we've never done a, a collab, have we? We've never done an online one before. So um, so so the, the more people we can get to join it, the better. Be so cool. So that that's going to be absolutely amazing. So uh, so the idea is that if, uh, just all we ask is if, if uh, we're, we're going to release detail, details later. Uh, she's been a bit busy um, the last sort of a uh, couple of days. Um, how how to join it? 
and all we ask is you do a little donation uh, to children in need um, and then hopefully we can get hundreds of people doing pudsies and how cool would it be to fill the, 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 t the, the news feeds with pudsies and try and get the attention of the BBC and get our cakes on TV real TV <laughs> right so I've got my little nuggets my black nuggets and then I've got my my gold luster so we've got signature gold from Faye Cahill um, so what I want to do is just get the dust Okay, and I'm just going to pop quite a lot in that one. Okay, close the bag over, and uh, we just want to shake our nuggets. Just start thinking of chicken, chicken nuggets there when I said that. Okay, and you can see here we've got a really nice, and I've went and lost my other gold, so two seconds, where is it? So Margaret's asking how thick would you wear your ganache on your cakes? Um, well, it just depends when you're, you're ganache in the cake. So uh, if you know, I just keep adding the ganache until it's until it's good. So it's probably about a centimetre thickness, maybe even more than that, but around about a centimetre in thickness, just under a half inch ish, ish. It really depends when you cut when when, when they cut the cake up at the wedding. I was quite surprised that some bits look a lot thinner and some look uh, a lot thicker. Um, so I just keep on ganache until I've got a perfect perfect finish. It's quick. I don't I don't really often cut my own cake. I think, in fact, I think that's the first time I've seen a cut cake. So if you don't really, it's hard to tell when you're when you're doing the ganache. Okay, so um, so now what I'm going to do is going to add a little bit more of the dark, just a wee bit, and then I've got a lot of my face summer gold. Pop that in there, and then I just want to add a little bit of this one as well. It's a different brand. It's Gold Sands from Rainbow Dust. Just to add a little brass, a little more brassiness to it. Okay, and I'll get James and uh, say one called chicken nuggets. <laughs> well, I quite like chicken nuggets. <laughs> I'm just thinking of chicken nuggets and chips and beans. It's a very good Scottish um, staple dinner. <laughs> there we go. So you can see here, they're quite muted gold colours. That's what I'm, I'm looking for uh, tonight. Not not too bright. So uh, you can see here, that still they, they do match. They're slightly different, uh, but they look, they look quite nice. Okay, so that's that. So then what we want to do is we want to get the, the paint brushes. Okay. And we want to get our um, pa paint palette. Move our nuggets out of the way. And uh, we just want to get a little bit of gold in there. I'm gonna do a little bit of that gold. The summer, that's the summer. Oh, that's too much. Oh, the other thing. Um, and a little bit of the gold sands. So I'm not going to use too much of that, just a little highlight, so that one. Okay, and then I'm going to use um, my favourite um, paint for mixing up. So it's Barco Quick Paint, uh, and it's great. It's an ethanol, is it ethanol? Yeah, ethanol based alcohol. Okay, and then just squirt that in. Now, you, to be honest, you can use vodka for this, it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't dry fast. Okay, and then you want to pick a pointy, quite a pointy large brush to start with, because all I'm going to do is I want to really just paint up the, the sides there, okay? So just mix your paint up. I'm not going to put the lid on that tonight. I'm not going to put the lid on to try and save the, the evaporation. I'll just put, I'll not screw it on. There we go. Right, okay, now I'm going to do this relatively fast. No, I would obviously normally take my time doing something like this, but the idea is we want to go on first of all and just get that line it's almost like that it's like the, it's almost like the fault line cakes isn't it we're doing so we've got that line but the fault line cakes are normally buttercream and you can put on a lot thicker but you don't want to do that with a uh, sugar paste that would be ghastly okay so just down there um, just get that gold on there just want to as you can see I'm being quite rough with it Okay, and then the same up the top. It's quite nice having that edge to, to lean against. Okay, and then same on this side. Right, now, after we do that, I want to get a slightly bigger brush like this one, okay? Uh, and then just put that in there. Now I could do with some kitchen roll, but I've not got, uh, it's over there, but I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, and now I just want to go on and just dab on top of there, just trying to break that, that line. Okay, 
Okay, you've got to be quite brave. On there, and we're just trying to soften it, aren't we? It's just like going for a softer, a softer look. But we've got that bold line underneath, which just helps to to do things a bit faster. Okay, so I put too much on there, but that doesn't matter. Okay, and we're just bringing that right up to the top. Now, because I'm using the um, alcohol, it's just drying very, very quickly. So it's better to use a wee brush. Mix it in. I should have definitely have tissue down, but never mind. Okay, and then the same thing up here, and just bringing that up. Now, all we're doing is just trying to get a nice, just bringing the two together. Now, I was thinking at the, at the sort of join here, is just trying to make, is bringing it together. So, just a bit more gold there. And this is where we change, change, change colours. Now I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. So uh, this one here is very pale, so I'm going to mix a little bit of the the dark in to the lighter one, just to sort of get, get halfway, just at one side. And then the same thing again. And then we just want to go round and just add these dots like that. Okay. So just up, just little nuggets of gold. There we go. Just bringing them down like that. Okay, and just let your artistic just go with the flow. Don't think about it too much. You really just want to get that working for you, and just just put your paintbrush where your paintbrush wants to go, if that makes sense. Sometimes you just get a little bit too, and then just stand back and look at it. That's fine, I want to put a little, because that big bulge is there, I'm thinking I just want to make up, I want to extend that a little bit there. That's fine, okay. So that's just got the edge looking good. Happy with that. And I'm just gonna finish off this little bit more of a brassy one. So I'm going to bring the colour from the other one into the little, little more brassy one. That's fine. And then just the odd brighter one, but nothing too much. Just to tie it all in. So on top, coming down there. Good. Right, so once we've done that, then we want to go to our... Oh, where are my little special brushes? There we go. No, there's definitely brushes missing from here. Two wee seconds, I'm going to go off camera. A wee second, sorry. Oh. Oh, there we go. Here's my special brushes. Right, so these ones are a lot longer. Um, see, this is, this is actually a fractal brush, and the, 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 this, the, the, um, the bristles are much longer, and it's much easier to get a longer painted line with the longer brushes. So. The other ones, the wooden ones, uh, I got from the art show, uh, which is next door to the Cake International show. So uh, the the craft one, okay, and they're really good for getting the longer longer mark. So take a little seat, and all we really want to do is just paint around some of these. You'll all have done this before. It's quite, it's been around for a while. So I'm just going to just mix up, and all we do is we just see which brush, we just load the side of it. Okay, and then we're just, I'm going to just tighten this up. And then the idea is we just want to go on there and just slowly and carefully just go round. Can. Right here. And just start to build up your lines, your gold lines. Okay. I'm going to do speedy to speedy fast today because Oh, so it's alive, and we don't want to be watching me painting all the time. Now I'm going to try one of the even longer ones, see how that gets on. So I'm just loading that brush up. Sometimes these ones dry out very, very quickly, but I've got a long piece here. There, like that. Yeah, you can see it dries very quickly. I think I prefer the smaller one, so I just go the smaller one. 
that's fine, that's good. So you can see here, I've just made a little a bad one here, so I just want to just go on there and then bring that down. Better pull it up. And of course you can create new lines, it doesn't always have to be just because there's a, a, a mix there. So just pull that up, there we so go. Is it a fault line cake or what's the difference between what you Well I'm, I'm doing a bit of a mashup, so a bit of marbling, a bit of fault line, a bit of um, collar work, yeah. So I'm just, it was just, I just, after the weekend I just thought I was going to, so it's, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't really, I wouldn't really call it a, a fault line, it's more just a, um, well, I suppose it is. It's, it's like a. I suppose like the earth opened up and there's a bit of marbling underneath. So I suppose it is a kind of fault line. But um, yeah. But all I'm doing is just adding. That it was as I say the inspiration was uh, from truly scrumptious. I saw their marble cakes and I just thought I want to do a bit more marbling because it's just good fun, isn't it? Well, good fun when it works. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit more gold into the the middle. Right now, I'm not liking the middle, but I think this bit here would be nice with like a bit of gold. I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it, and I, again, I'm just going with my gut. Now, I might just do this and think, what on earth have I done? But we're just gonna go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna in there, and I just want to break up that middle area there, just to not make it look as empty. So I'm gonna taper it off, and bring it around, get my smaller brush. Okay, and just bring it up. I'm going to bring it out from the, the edges just so it's got a slight. There we go. And then just stapling around that one as well. Yeah, it just looked a little bit empty. Like that. Yeah, prefer that. Now, if you wanted to, you could even get a little bit of black and then you can go in a little bit of black to darken it down a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so that looks good. Yeah, happy with that. Now, what I want to do now is just get a little bit of that light color and then just lighten up the middle a bit. Just a little bit of a light splash. And it'll just give us a nice All right. Okay, so once we've done that, move all these out of the way. They can just go in the sink in a wee minute. And then what we want to do is we want to just stick our rocks down. We're, uh, we're big rocks, so what a nice mess I've made of this table. Now if that just, you know, oh there we go, look, I was going to say, if it's alcohol, it should just evaporate and wipe away. There we go. Lovely. So Joe's saying gold leaf would be effective there too? Oh yeah, so I've got some gold leaf there. So if you want to pimp your cake up, definitely some gold leaf just to sort of, uh, just to make the, the, the line a little bit more, um, stick out a bit more. So what we've got here is these little nuggets and the idea is you just want to get a little bit of glue and just pop some glue on the back. Now because there's dust on here, what you're best to do is put the glue on and just sit it down, okay? And then the same thing and just let it go a little bit tacky. Like that. And all we're doing is going to start adding some of these little, little, just little nuggets just to give it a kind of juiciness. Um, so it's going to be a wee bit time consuming, so I might not do the whole thing. Um, so let's just go on with the, the first one. Okay, now because of this bit here that's got the big bit, I'm thinking this might look really good just stuck on here. Maybe, yep, that's fine. And maybe what we could do is just change direction and just go for different colours. So maybe put a little bit more glue on there. Let's see if I can just go straight on with that nugget. Is it really stick on? Yeah, no, it's sticking on. Yeah. And all we want to do is just go back and forward and just, just really, oh yeah, because the sugar paste is still soft, it's, it's, it's actually sticking on uh, lovely. So we're just going round and you're just trying to get like a, a kind of, can you make it a bit more juicy, a little bit more um, 3D uh, feeling about the cake and not, not just about, and not just as flat looking. So like I'm sticking that right up there. So it's sticking out, and I just think it just gives a nice, a nice feel. I don't know what can he, what what is it just is this just a mashup? I don't know. It's just it's just it just came into my head. It's almost like Gouda cake. 
A what? Okay, is it a geo cake? A, a geo, a geo cake. Yeah, I suppose it's got a bit of geo about it. A Gaudi cake. A, a, a Gaudi, I was I'm not thinking. I was gonna say I'm not seeing Gaudi, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So yeah. It's funny because I don't like the the geo cakes, like the one that's got the all the the uh, what's it called um, the isomalt. I don't know what it is about them. It gives me the I don't know why it gives me this slightly gives me this like heebies heebie-jeebies. A heebie-jeebie. It just doesn't feel right. Something doesn't feel right about it. When I, when I see it, I don't see something that looks nice. I see something that really doesn't look nice. And then maybe I might look at this cake and then think, so now that somebody said that, I'm going to look at this cake and not like it. <laughs> um, so it's funny how everyone's got their own taste. Because I've, I've been asked a lot a lot of times to do a geo style cake, um, but I'm just I'm just not there. I'm not. Maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a slow developer into new styles. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's where it is. What your David's got a strange look in his face. So Heather's just asking if Valentina's book is in English. I'm sure it is. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's Valentina's Sugarland. Yes, maybe we could put a link on. Yeah. It. I don't even know, but is Valentina even on, on this group? I don't know if she is. I'm not sure. Surely she is. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so we're just going around there, and uh, I'm I'm uh, really impressed at how quickly these, how easily these little rocks are sticking on there. Um, hopefully she is. It'd be really nice to, to get her to do a, a book review. So Val I, I met Valentina many moons ago uh, when I used to teach in Germany and she was working as a shop assistant for Tolly Torton, a cake shop in Germany and uh, I remember thinking you, you shouldn't be a shop assistant, you, you should be standing where I'm standing and you should be teaching the class uh, and then fast forward a couple of years and then and that's exactly what she's doing so it's really, really nice. There we go. Right, okay so I think that's coming together quite nice. I'm forgetting to use these darker ones, I'm going for the lighter colour so let's just pop that up there. Good. So I think about, I'm thinking more a bit more of a intense uh, of the the rocks here for some reason it, it, it almost like the, the, the start of the, the join um, sort of thing. So there we go. Now we had Matthew was looking after the house. My nephew who's doing the filming, he's over there. He's doing the editing, the live editing, and his uh, girlfriend is over, Shannon. Yeah, and I gave them permission to film it. Shannon's American. And I said. She wanted to bake cookies when she was here in, in the studio. And I said, yeah, she could bake she, the cookies, but there's no way she's going to bake in the studio without the camera's being switched on. And I said, you just do it as a, a fun thing, like Uncle Paul's away and there being naughty film and tuto a tutorial. But they chickened out, they didn't do it. So I was like, oh no. And then on top of that, to, to even more annoy me, of course, I'm, I've gave up sh I've gave up sugar. So that they left me all these cookies. So David, have you tried one yet? I've tried one. You have? And, and what's the marks out of 10? Oh, nine. Nine. Because you're never right to get 10, is that Oh, right? well done, look at that, yeah. <laughs> is Shannon on tonight? She might be. Is she? Is she, is she, on, the, is she on the group? Shannon, next time you're not coming unless you bake cookies for a tutorial. That, we've, done, we've made a decision. <laughs> so you need to fly over a day early so we can, we can do it properly, yeah. So there's a couple of people missed how you made the rocks in the first place, maybe explain. How we did what, sorry? The, the rocks. Yeah, so it was just black sugar paste and I just ripped it so you got all the, the ruggedness. I ripped it off, that was about lunchtime today. And then so give it about five or six, seven hours. Uh, and then just leave them on a sponge. I did have this, yeah. So just dry them on a bit of sponge, just a black fondant, sugar paste. And then once it crusts, uh, I just popped in the food bag and give them a, a good old shake. And uh, you can see here, we're getting a really nice uh, effect. Just a little bit of sugar glue. So just tie those powder. Um, and then that's just sticking them on there. Now I did make a few big ones because I wasn't sure if the big ones would be good, but I'm quite, I quite like the big ones. I wish I'd made more. It looks like that, is it fool's gold? It looks like fool's gold, doesn't it? It's well, got a kind of fool's gold. Uh, Colette was just saying you should, should go and get your rocks at a jewelry shop. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> gold rocks. Yeah. You listening, David? Yeah. That'd be a nice way to pimp up your cake. Yes, if you just bring in all the nuggets, yeah. we'll stick them on the cake for you. The cake might not quite make it to the venue, but we'll be off. <laughs> off to Monaco. There we go. Someone did that, was it not? Was it Little Venice Cakes? Remember, she did a cake and it was real nuggets of gold on it. Mm -hmm. So it made the cake mega, mega, mega expensive. 
Right, so there is, a, there is customers out there that you don't know. So we'll put some in the middle just to, um, just to sort of break it up a little bit. And then we'll have a quick tidy up and then we're gonna do a, a, a little flower just to finish it off. Oh, I don't know if I like the rocks in the middle, but I've started, so I'll finish. And then we just do a few at the sides just to break it up. Yeah, I'm not sure with the rocks in the middle. There we go. Um, so maybe a couple of little ones down the bottom. There we go. And then a couple of little tiny, tiny, tiny ones. This is where you get carried away and then it's five hours later. Let's see. Yeah, it has got a geo feel about it. Yeah. That wasn't intentional. Anyway, there we go. I don't, I don't like it now. <laughs> Next. Right, pop that over there. Have you got another wee slideshow you want to show while I quickly do a quick, quick, or we slideshow it out? Oh no, we, we have got bite size available, haven't we? have got bite size, mm -hmm. go for it. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so the bite size uh, things that you've been watching, we've popped a few of them over the last couple of weeks. Uh, what we do is when we refer them our tutorials, uh, we do bite size. So for the people who are busy, busy rushing around, uh, a lot of, we've got a lot of people who commute into work. Um, so you can sit down and you can watch the bite size when you get into work. If you've got a Wi-Fi or you've got a good uh, G, uh, and you can just watch the bite size. So it's like a little snippet. And of course, and if you like the tutorial, then you can watch the, the, the bigger one. Uh, but for a lot of people, they just, need to, they just need to watch the bite size to get a gist of it, um, which gives them an idea, inspiration, if they want to go ahead and make that cake or not. So um, so that's all good. Right, now with, well, how many bite sizes have we got now? We've also a lot of bite sizes, we've done that for quite a while now, haven't yeah, we? 150. Yeah, 100, have we got 150 bite sizes? Yeah, yeah. 7,512 lessons on the site now, do you know that? 7,500? Unique, yeah, because people keep saying we, we repeat lessons. 7,512. Wow. So, so lessons are uh, like not not the full tutorial. That's individual lessons. So that if I want to show, has got ten steps. That's yeah. ten lessons per tutorial. But yeah, so seven thousand five hundred. Yeah. That's pretty well, intensive. This, this what we're doing just now is considered one lesson. Oh, because we're filming it all in one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Uh, have you got yeah, a slideshow? Yeah, yeah. Matthew's got a slideshow. Oh, I didn't even know we had a slide. We've got yeah, a slide of all the, all our stats. All the latest stats. <laughs> there we go. So nine hundred thirty-nine courses. One hundred ninety-nine thousand. It's actually 940 something. Wow. So we're 60 people away from having 200,000 registered members. Wow. Not all paying, unfortunately. That's if they were all paying, they'd be living in um, the moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and 1,085 unique hours. And the seven day free trial. That's, that's the reason we put that up there. Was for anyone who doesn't know, um, Cake Flix is a seven day free trial, so you get to try it all out for free. And Okay, so it's a bit shorter. <laughs> <laughs> always, so feel, always feel uncomfortable doing that. I though. know, I know, that's crazy. I suppose I've got to do it. Yeah, so I've got my little A5 pieces of wafer paper. I folded them in half, okay, and then we're going to get a 20 gauge florist wire, sorry, 26 gauge florist wire, okay, and then just cut into three. Where's my scissor, scissors gone? Okay, so just cut the wire into three, roughly. There we are. Okay, and then all I want to do is get some water. Okay, spray it, lay the wire in the middle, and then fold it over, and make sure you press down and uh, it holds it together, okay? 
so like that so one big huge petal like that okay now if I'd been really really smart I don't know why I didn't do this off camera but never mind I'm not that smart today so I've been in a, I'm, I think you call it a fart in a trance today sugar your sugar dependency yeah I, I, I hadn't really thought about it until about an hour before I came on why am I feeling like this and it's obviously I, I've, I've, I've hit the I've, I've went is it the cold turkey they call it so uh, when you're after 8 days oh no they say how many days it's to break a habit 28 it's really hard work in the cake industry isn't it so when you're a sugar monster and I definitely class myself as a sugar monster I, I can wake up in the morning and eat sugar and not think of it savoury at all so, uh, so yeah. uh, Jackie's watching YouTube and she's saying that uh, since she started watching she's found herself saying we which is a Scottish thing for little or small. Yeah, a wee wire. A wee bit, a wee wire. We're going to make a wee flower. We're talking, we're talking, we're reminiscing. Uh, who were we talking to about the hang ons and the cakes? Uh, I can't remember what we were talking about. What was that about the cliff? I can't remember what that was. Oh, my auntie. Oh, yeah, uh, Dave's auntie. We'd, we'd spent a, a few hours, three hours in the car with Dave's auntie from Kilmarnock. So we're telling them all the stories and we're talking about the Highlands and uh, one of the students almost fell off the wee cliff in her car. <laughs> she with a house that was on the top of a hill, they called it the, the hill house and they were told students not to drive up this hill because uh, it was a bit dangerous but some students uh, insisted they could drive up hills and then they got halfway up the hill and put the brakes on and then just slid back down. There was a wee cliff at the bottom and this morning I was in the shower Scrubbing the back, and then it's, 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 the, okay, it was the, the vroom, like someone uh, really accelerating fast to try and get out of a situation. So I ran down with my shorts and t shirt on, or my dressing gown, and there, there was this poor lady like holding on, like I went over right, and the back wheel was completely off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Right, okay, so. Just, just a couple of questions for oh. uh, wafer papers that you've used. Uh, where did I put the. So a cool pit, it's cool pit. Uh, waiver paper and uh, it comes from cool pit. <laughs> and oh, there's another question just. It's actually good that you're talking because it's given me time for this to dry. Uh, yeah. Celia McDermott has asked, uh, can you do a clock tutorial? A clock weed? A clock weed. I don't know what that is. No, neither do I. Um, yeah, send us a link to a clock weed in there. Clock weed, yes. Okay, so uh, before we wait for the paper to just firm up a little bit, don't let it touch each other actually. Uh, I'm using black stamens from again from Cool Pit, uh, and we probably need um, what would we use all of them? Do you know, we might we might use all of them. So I've got a little bunch again of like crystals. You can tell I've been back home in Scotland because I've got a shed. Do you know the little plastic containers you get? I've got about fifteen of them in the shed of cake stuff that I've never been able to get over. So we we, ha we, we hired, we paid for an extra two suitcases. Uh, to come over and I managed to chuck lots of stuff in so it's all, it cost 50 quid a suitcase extra so £100 for two suitcases but when I work out I probably brought about £600 worth of cake stuff over so it's been, definitely been a saving so, so I found some bling which I've not used bling for ages um, so we're going to use a bit of bling and some black stamens so the little uh, demontes and all I want to do is just get a couple of stamens at a time or not a couple, so a couple of bunches, not a couple. So okay. are, are there different thicknesses to wafer paper? To wafer paper, um, yeah, that's the th I think that's the thinnest one, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, so you do get, the that, that's the thinnest one I think you can buy, yeah, so it's the standard one. It's, it's definitely not the thick one. Okay, so I've got some florist tape, I've got a little black stain, I've cut the end off so it's not too thick. Okay, and I want to bring the stamens up as high up as I can get them. I get my florist tape, wrap it around, and then just scrape that around. And you can see there, I get my first little bunch. And the idea is, I'm just making a, a random flower. Um, what's it called? Is it a fantasy flower? Again, cut the little stamens. And these little stamens, they're not, they're not the cheapest. I think they're about two or three pounds just for one little bunch. So they're not, they're not cheap. Um, but they save you a heck of a lot of time. I remember at college we had to make these um, some of the time, and it's just you know it's just life's too short. Okay, so uh, so just again get another wee bunch. So you just pick them up, just bunch them together, and the idea is we just keep going round this theme, the 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 uh, until we're happy with the 
the sort of variation of the black against the silver. Now, my idea is, once we're finished, we're going to airbrush the, um, the flower. Now, when we airbrush the flower, we're going to lose the, 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 the sparkle from the Demontes. But I kind of want that to happen uh, because obviously it's like silver and these are sort of kind of goldy cake. So just to sort of break it up a little bit. Now, I think that looks quite nice. I'm going to no, I'll put one more. I'll put one more bunch in, and then we'll, we'll get the flower made, and then we can go and get our supper. We're having supper tonight. There we go. Right. So just while you're doing that, next week we have Arati on. Um, oh, Arti. Arti, sorry. Keep getting mispronouncing. Yeah. Arti from our studio in Bangalore. So Coming live from Bangalore, how cool was that? Yeah. All the way from India. So we've uh, done a couple of tests and we're all good to go. So yeah, looking forward to looking forward to that. So that'll be next Tuesday, same same time, same place. Same time, same place. So next Tuesday, and Artie is uh, using her amazing pace now. Uh, I think that was the was it the song you just watched? Yeah, the, the the quick bite. Yeah, and that was the same paste. So she's she's designed this her own paste. Uh, that's just phenomenal. It's, it's just best paste I've ever used. So there you go. Look at that lovely little blingy centre there. Okay. So then what we want to do is once we've got that little blingy centre, you've got two ways that you can do this. Okay. You can get your uh, scissors and you can just go on if you can't bear to go mental like that and just make big petals like that or a bit of origami. Just get your your, your hand and the idea is that you want to just rip the sides so we're getting a very ripped looking petal like that. I really like that look more so. So I'm just going to go around, I'm just going to rip the sides of this one, oops, like that. And I just want it to be really random. The more random, the better. Okay, so ripped, ripped petals. Now that bit at the bottom there is too thick. You want it to be Quite narrow, so like that, okay? Oops. So I move that out of the side, out of the way. So there's two petals there already. Move all that junk to that side. Okay, so again, so just hold it that way. So I'm going to rip out the way. Hold your thumb against the bit that you don't want the paper to disappear into, so you don't you don't lose it, okay? So I turn it around, so I put my thumb, and I'm keeping my thumb in the shape of the petal, rip against the thumb, you see that? So, and around. And I think it just looks really nice just seeing the that ripped effect. Just something really, really different. Um, and so, you know, sometimes we just spend so much time on and money on cutters uh, when sometimes just a wire and a bit of paper and we can still make something quite funky. Remember I said we're gonna make a mental flower. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> Have I lost it? Um, yeah, so we j just as we came on there, yeah. we got an email to say that we are allowed to talk about the corporate cake you've been working on. So All right. It will be released this, this week's tutorial. Oh, cool. So, um, two weeks, was it two, well, just, we were on holiday. We just came back from France. Yeah, we're on, on our holiday and we uh, got a, an email from a company in the UK, I think it's just a UK company, uh, called webuyanycar.com. And I thought it was, I thought it was like, well, that doesn't make sense. Why do they want the cake when we live nowhere near them? But they wanted us to film a tutorial of the advert that's on television right now. And it's, a, it's Philip Schofield, and he's jumping out a big giant cake. So they wanted to make, us to make a, some, something similar along those lines. It was up to us, a bit of free reign. But something like that, where a wee model of Philip exploding out the top. You got a picture of it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. So there you go. So, um, so I did explain to them, I don't, I don't do realism. Uh, in the, the, the term of uh, faces um, and uh, uh, yeah so it's really good fun so and it's the cake that's on the, the advert so, uh, so that was good fun to get asked to make some of that wasn't it yeah. so that that would be next week's tutorial and it's just making a wee face and how to cut out corporate letters obviously making a big cake so yeah so that was good fun so, so it was quite quite an unusual request um, for them to for, for me to get paid to film a tutorial <laughs> for a change <laughs> There we go. Right, so all I'm doing here is just bending back the, the wires, like so. And all we want to do is then get our, um, our stamen 
and squeeze that on there, get our florist tape, and we just want to add the petal on, okay? Just add it on and just keep turning it around and then we're just adding those big giant mental flowers on, petals on. Okay, just on there. Just keep spinning it around. And you can see they're huge, but the idea is it's just a big mass of flower and then we're gonna spray it. And the idea is I kinda want it to lose even more shape uh, once it's once it's on. Uh, so I don't want it to be just as um, perfect looking. When I say perfect, you know what I mean. I want it to be this formed and then uh, change shape. So I'm going to just go around, just move around quite a lot. So I'm just spinning that around. There we go. Okay, so I've got my airbrush at the ready. So I'll add that one on there. Okay. Yeah. Now, when I've got not got time today for this, but is that one came loose, the cheeky monkey? So that's what happens when you spin too fast. That one's came loose. So you're going to stay in there. Oh, that's annoying. Look, I've lost one. Never mind. Okay, good job I've got these two here. Right. Okay, so I'm going to be a little more gentle because obviously that was being a little bit heavy handed there. I was just trying to show you not to be too worried about things falling apart with the this weaver paper. Okay, maybe a bit more gentle. And I'm just going to just very carefully now, rather than be too heavy handed, move that across to let the more, one more space in there, like so. Right, that's good. Very abstract looking flower. Okay, so once that's on there, we then want to just um, get the earbrush out and let's get some spraying done. Now, I'm just going to rearrange these. We're going to open them up a little bit to start with, okay, and then we're going to close it off more once it dries. So you can see how big that is on the side there. Okay, so um, now I could do with a little sponge. Where's my sponge? No. Nope. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Kitchen roll from a holder. There we go. Good. So we've been asked what what's the flower you're making? It's just a fantasy flower. Just this. It's what's in my head. <laughs> that's, that's what's in my head when I'm, I'm, when I'm, I'm deprived of sugar. <laughs> right. Okay, so airbrush over. That's fine. Now, I've got a little bit of white and a little bit of black, but I was going to make a bit of gold up, but I've decided I'm going to just do the, a little bit of gold on there by hand. So just give your airbrush colour a shake. Now, what I've got here, you might not have noticed, there's been a wire here the whole night. So see when I, I want to get something to be quite closed, what I do is I make a little wire, get a wire here, and I just, of course, you know, I'm letting things dry. I can't dry it so it keeps that, I want it to be more down the way than open up the way. So, uh, so that's why that is there for when we're adding the colour, okay? So I pop it into my lovely little holder, give that a wee shake. And just what we want to do is cover the kitchen in black airbrush colour. Switch on the gun. Okay. Oh my goodness, something's not right. Trigger's not pulling back far enough. Wait now. We've done something. Oh, wait now. Well, that's better. Hmm. So does some doesn't feel right, but I'm going to go with it because I've got no other choice. But it's not enough colours coming out that I'd like, but I don't know why that is. Okay, so we just want to go on, and I just want to... Now, because it's, this is ethanol-based, yeah, something's not right. The colour's definitely not coming out as fast as it should. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to go around the edges this time, just to save time, because something's not quite right with what I've done. Now, because it's ethanol based, it dries very, very fast, and it shouldn't alter the shape that much. That's what we're looking for, okay? Oh, sorry. I thought you could see it from the main one. Yeah. And we're just going to round. 
like that. Now I'm going to turn it around and then just going to give the backs a spray. God, we're going very gothic tonight, aren't we? Very Halloween y. Perfect cake for a, an October wedding. When is Halloween? Is it, the, is it the 31st of October or something yeah. like that? Yeah. And what's this, July? Just July, July, September. Oh, we've got a wee bow yet, yeah. Well, I'm not sure. As I say, we need, to get, we need to get started these cakes for the customers. Okay, so I'm just going to fill these in. Now, as I'm doing this, it's definitely starting, to, even though it's ethanol, you can see it is starting to curl around with, with all that paint that's going on there. And as I say, I did want a, a mental flower. Okay, so turn it round. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, and then just back round. And I'm just really... The idea is we really want the, the jaggy edges to, to show up, which makes the, the flower even more different. Okay. I don't know what's going on with this hairbrush. Maybe in a wee clean, but I thought I did clean it before we, uh, after the last one. Okay, now I'm just going to do a little bit of black just in the middle. There we go. Right, okay, so let me see. No, I still want a bit more black, so I'm just going to hopefully add more black to that edge. So Clyde, uh, Bruce is saying she's having the same problem, many ideas or suggestions? I think it needs stripped and cleaned. So you need to take your needle out and give it a clean and put it back in. So it's probably just, um, I, thought I, ha I thought I had done that after the last one, but obviously I hadn't. So you best to strip it back. I mean, strip it out, take it off and lay them in order to go back in. If you just take them all off over the table, you'll forget to put it back together again. And even take a photo, just in case somebody walks in and moves them by accident. Um, because that would be awfully upsetting if that happened. And Liz has asked, is there an alternative to airbrushing if you don't have an airbrush? Yep, just um, alcohol uh, and paint. Uh, no, 96% alcohol, uh, a little bit of paint and just paint them. Yeah. Or dust, you can even just dust, but with the black it's probably better to, to use paint. But definitely make the flower up first, just to... Um, yeah, there we go. So I'm going to stop there today because that's going to take ages. But it's looking quite black and you can see the crystals see the crystals they've got colored with that and it just kind of gives it that kind of gothic -y. you can wipe it off a wee bit just so it doesn't look just as in, intense i can open it up now a bit more as well okay definitely a fantasy flower so think they grow more there in your garden somehow okay now as i say uh, as, as it's because it's uh, the, the moisture what you can do is just hook that over there just so when it starts to dry it dries in that What's that? What's that? I hear what the noise is, it's the, the computer, isn't it? Just the, the fans because it's so hot. Right, okay, and then to finish off, we just get our colours back. We get our alcohol back. So if, if Colette stripped it down, cleaned it, put it back together, and it's still causing problems? Um, well, if it's still causing problems, there must be something wrong well, with it. Then. The parts must need yeah, I'd, I'd say so. So I, I would just speak to the owner, whoever it is, like. Um, You've got Spectrum Flow, Dinky Doodle, you've got Iowata, and I think they all, I, I think they all cin Cinderella cakes. I think they all take the, we'll, we'll accept them back to clean them for you, as far as I remember. I remember when I got my Iowata, she said, if we ever have any problems, I tried to do it myself, if we can't do it, send it to them and they would fix it. Because um, I think the first time you get one, you're a bit, a bit worried about it. But you, um, nine times, so when I, when I strip mine, I put it in really hot water and clean and put the whole thing in the water and, and shiggle it about. Uh, as well, just to make sure it's, it's super clean. How's that? Is that good? Is that good advice? Right. Okay, so I've got my alcohol, I've got my, my brushes. Has it moved any since it's been. Oh, is, it, is, it, is it soft? Not really. Yeah. Oh no, it's getting there. Yeah. So now what we want to do is we want to go around and we just want to get that gold on the, the edges. Somebody's laughing. So Innes has said she needs new glasses because she just looked in and the way the kitchen roll is unraveled it looks like cake. <laughs> <laughs> <In the front camera. laughs> That's funny. Okay, so I'm just going to round the edges. Again, because I'm using the ethanol, it shouldn't really alter the, the paper. So it should keep the paper as is. Now I do want a bit more gold shown, so I'm going to go around just careful to start with, and then I'm going to go around the same as what we did with the 
the, the cake and I'm going to add more gold touches to it. I just want to get these edges all done uh, first of all. Now because it's a 26 gauge wire it's bouncing around, around quite a lot uh, but I'm just dealing with it. I'm trying to lower the, the gauge of wire. I'm really bad at putting big thick gauge wires in but then when, I, when I've looked back at my cakes in the past I thought oh I wish I'd went thinner. Um, so okay there we go so that's that good right so now we do the whole, the whole dabby thing and I just want to go around and just dab around there I'm going to add more alcohol so I'm going to spray some uh, uh, gold on to quite like a sprayed look so I'm just going to do that okay I'm just going to just tap make a mess. I'm going to pop it in here. That's better. Oh, much better. There we go. Oh, all over my face. Oh, that's nipping. <laughs> okay, stand back when you're doing it. Okay, could you do my pa uh, toothbrush? There we go. Oh, I love, I love a bit of this. There we go. Right, right. Right, that's good. So happy with that. So you can see, look at that, lovely. Okay, I'm gonna get a bit of that other color now, and I really just want to dimple that gold up. Almost like doing a lily. Watch that, petals came loose, so I need to just watch. Okay. Maybe just hold the back of them a little bit. Okay. Right, I think that looks pretty, pretty random. Yeah, that's probably the most random I made. Now I'm going to put a little bit of gold in the middle, on top of the, the crystals and the stems. Stamens. There we go. Right, and then I just want to really close this up so it just looks really crazy. Like that. There we are. Perfect. Good. Right, so if you just get your wire cutters, which you're going to have to go out and get them. Good. There we are. So it just looks really, really different. Very abstract flower. Pop that in your little folder. Move this out of the way. I was going to push that all down there. Clear the space. There we are. Now, the one thing I definitely use at the weekend was a hundred, as I say, hundreds of posy picks on the family wedding cake that I made. Uh, and I had spares because I always buy too much when doing things like that. Now, where's my little cake stand? I want to go on a wee cake stand. Just keep them talking, Matthew. That's it, keep them talking. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Come out with calamity data. <laughs> I couldn't find a nice cake stand, so I had to get the bling out. This one's not been out for a long time. I thought I had a black one. Look, it doesn't quite match, but I suppose it's stones with uh, rustic stones. Better than nothing. There we are. Okay, so that one there. And uh, okay, so yeah, probably doesn't match, but never mind. It was the, it was the closest one to hand. It was either that or a pink one, which wasn't really going to work. Okay, so I just want to then so to, to attach the flower. If it's a real cake, you just should. I should have got the posy picks. Oh, oh yeah, there's the posy picks there. So um, little bag. So that's the spare ones that I had from the. Thing. So there's a posy pick there, if you don't want a posy pick. Uh, is, it, is that actually called a posy pick? A large posy pick, yeah. Um, and then that's the little bit. So that goes into the cake. So if I'm looking around the, the cake, I'm thinking, where do I want to put the, the flower? So do I want to put the flower at the top? Or do I want to put it down there? Or even, I think, there? Or at the top, let me just see. Uh, I think we'll just pop it into the side there. Yeah, so if that was a real cake, then of course I would just pop that posy pick in like that. I'm just going to put it in just for purposes. So there we go. A real cake it would just slide in really, really easily. And then of course then that just pops in there like that. You slide that in. There we go, like that. And I can't get it to go any further because it's polystyrene. Okay, and then once that's on, then I want to stand back and look at it and I'm going to, going to fold those petals down. I'm going to rearrange it so it's pointing in a better direction. There we 
go and I want to then open that back up and you need to just play around don't just put it in and then just walk away you need to make sure you get it how you want it to be now if you put it on and you think actually I wish it was a little bit more shaped then if you just get a spray bottle or the fabric liquid to give it a little spray hang it upside down if you want to be more closed and hang it upside down if you want to be more open fabric liquid turn it upside down and it'll just start to open up the way so it just depends what way you want to go and I think that's us there there we go so um so one pure dad pure bad mental <laughs> wedding cake <laughs> so there we go so I turn it around and then you can see there like that so definitely a bit random um, so now the other thing I meant to say was I'm not going to do it tonight because airbrush is acting up a little bit see if you just get a little card place it at the bottom see if you want to intensify the black two ways you can do it you can give it a quick airbrush as long as you protect the bottom so it doesn't get sprayed or get the steamer out and just give it a wee steam and that will just clean up all the marks uh, or even a spray glaze you can give it a little glaze if you want to make it shiny I'm not going to do that tonight because the main thing was just doing all the wee techniques the rocks and the marble and the, and the mental flower in the middle there so um, so here we go. So, any questions, Mr. Bryce? Yeah, no, no. I've just been uh, looking at problems. Some some people don't seem to be seeing it in the group, but can see it on YouTube. So we'll have a oh. look into that afterwards. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm terribly sorry. Yeah, I, found that. I just refre refreshed it. Oh, oh. You just you've just refreshed it. Yeah, I refreshed it. Oh, you need to refresh if it's, if you can't view it, uh, refresh it. But if, yeah. they're not gonna, if they're not going to see it, if they're not on. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I think that's it. Just that's a reminder us. that next Tuesday will be RT from Bangalore, India, and she'll be doing. Oh, now, no, 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 I'm going to have to correct myself. It's slightly earlier next week. Oh, oh, uh, because it's I'm, come from India. I'm sure it's six p.m., but I'll I'll post something out. So oh yeah, let everybody know. That's right. Uh, it will be slightly earlier. Yeah. So, uh, so David will post that on the group. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry if it was a bit random tonight. <laughs> um, just one of those weeks. Random every night. Random every night, but I feel more random than ever. I feel like a little bit spaced out. <laughs> Maybe next week we'll have some sugar. <laughs> well, hopefully not. Anyway, so uh, so thanks for watching, guys. It's been good fun. Uh, I hope you've learned maybe one little trick tonight. Uh, and if not, if not, then I do apologise. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys.